Welcome to EMTV Review. Today we have a fun and interesting video because I'm going to compare the brand new 2023 Levo Cell and put it up against the tried and true Gen 3 Levo. So full powered versus mid powered. I'm not going to say which bike is better, but my goal is to help you decide which bike is right for you. The ideal e-bike stable should have both, you know, like just like you have many mountain bikes, you just have many e-bikes. But if you had to choose one or your first one, which one should it be? To that end, I am going to put out seven or eight factors and compare these two in each factor, give you some specs, some hard numbers, some, uh, some audio, let you compare the sound for yourself. And I'm gonna arm you with some questions on what to ask yourself. At the end of the day, uh, it's a personal decision. You know, what is important to you when you're buying your first or your next e-mount bike? Okay, first the caveat, we are only talking about the specialized 2023 Levo SL, not the previous one. I've had that, I've owned that for a couple years, and this one is significantly better. Uh, I have a video of this bike uh, up here, and it, the motor is more powerful, more quiet, the geometry, ride quality is, has been thoroughly updated. So let's just discuss this one. The first factor we're gonna discuss is ride quality. And usually we're talking about descending ability, cornering ability, jump, you know, which one is more fun, which one puts a bigger smile on your face and keeps you safer, right? So this one really took a page out of the Levo. It copied the mullet wheel size. You know, it has an adjustable headset angle. It has the same plush but supportive suspension. And, you know, also has a flip chip for the shock. And it even one up it a little bit by allowing 29er uh, wheels on the rear. So if that's what you prefer, you're a taller guy, you want, uh, you want that bump and rolling uh, abilities, then th this one can accommodate it with a chainstay that lengthens. So both of them, I would say, are cream of the crop. Some of the best handling e-mount bikes right now. This is a huge accomplishment, what they did. And you know, with that being said, that being equal, I would say this one rides better. You know, because it's 10 pounds lighter than the Levo, you know, everything is done with a little bit more ease, meaning it slows down a little better, uh, it changes direction easier, pops, roots and rocks, you know, just a little higher. So, you know, just, it's not, it's not mind blowing, but it is there if you are adept enough to notice it. So the winner and the right quality is the Levo SL. The one caveat is the Levo, because it has power and, and weight on its side, is you can equip it a little more with you know, the beefy stuff that matters. So bigger rotors, as you can see, I'm putting a, a push shock right now on it, and the latest one, really good. I have a downhill tire. So you could gear it you know, more towards you know, that, that descending prowess that you need, put coil, coil. Uh, you could do it here too, but it's not really that appropriate or it, 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 uh, it doesn't quite fit. Second factor is a simple one, which one looks better? And you know, it's important, you know, not the most important, but it's an easy one. And I would say the new Levo cell looks better. Uh, they got rid of the sidearm suspension, so it's a cleaner design. And the key for me is the, the down tube is smaller. This is about a 10 inch girth on the down tube. This is about a 10 and three quarters. And the motor is really more discreet here. I've never really liked the, the, uh, the Levo bump right here, but it's so huge, you know, right under the water bottle because they turned the motor uh, to go this way so they could fit that humongous battery uh, and slide it from the bottom. So on the looks department, this one looks better. Sound and noise, which one is more discreet? You know, which one is more silent? The old uh, Levo cell was kind of noisy. This one has been silenced about 40%, 44% more quiet than the old one. And now they're about equal. You know, when you are, when they're working at equal levels, let's say 300 watts, which is the limit of this uh, compared to this. This can go 540, but let's not compare 300 to 540. Let's say they're both going at 300 watts. This one, they're about the same. But there is a caveat here, which is that this one gets noisy over time. Uh, and it, uh, this is about a two, three year old uh, Levo of mine, and it's kind of noisy now. <laughs> so so uh, the Levos, the, the, the SLs, I don't think they, they don't have the design where it gets uh, more loud over time. So 
you know, a slight advantage to this one. Okay, the next important factor is weight. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, it's a big concern of people getting into e-bikes. First, uh, weight is uh, kind of a big deal when you're handling the bike. Uh, after like 10 rides, you get used to it. You, you, have, you develop your upper body uh, to, and, and your, your, your shifting of weight uh, to move the bike around. Uh, when you're coming from a 21 pound bike, you're like a little stiff and this, this feels like an anchor. So you get used to it a little bit. So 10 pound difference, I would say. This was 49 pounds when I first got it, when I uh, didn't mess with it yet. And this was 39 pounds. And they're both S-Works bikes, 14,000, 14,000. So very compatible. I'm not sure in, in the lower levels, it'll be about the eight to 10 pound difference as well on, on each uh, spec level. And they, they save the weight on the battery uh, significantly and a little bit on the motor. So weight matters, like I said, in the riding, you know, popping off corners, changing direction. So definitely the, the lighter the weight, the better. Uh, also, just moving it around the, the garage, moving around the, uh, putting it on your rack and whatnot. Uh, if you are a, a, an older, a, a smaller person, you know, 50 pounds to put on your pickup truck or even on your rack, or even just to charge it and move it around the garage, uh, it, it's no joke. So the winner in the weight category obviously is this, the Levo SL. The next subject we're gonna discuss is power. Power obviously is uh, on, on the side of, of the heavyweight here, uh, but I'm gonna give you some real numbers. So this one has 90 newton meters of torque. This one has 50 newton meters of torque. This one has about 540 watts of power, and this one 300 watts of power. So what does that mean? What that means is I have a, a test course, a 520 foot climb, one mile long, and how I compared them is same rider, same everything, uh, using uh, outputting the same power, and I did it with power meter pedals. So the average from top to bottom is 200 watts, the same, and I put both bikes in their max level. The data I got is this one climbs that hill in five minutes and eight seconds, and this bike climbs that hill in six minutes, 51 seconds. So this is good compared to the old Levo SL and the, the Trek Fuel EXE, and it, it's pretty good. But as you can see, this is kind of a rocket. So a minute 40, right, is about the difference, and that's a 500 foot hill. But what if you had a significant mountain, you know, the, uh, a 2,000 foot hill, 2,080 to be exact, uh, using my, my data. I just multiplied it by four, and what you get is 20 minutes and 24 seconds, and 27 minutes and 24 seconds. So now you're talking seven minute difference. So seven minute difference, if you are race, if everybody's on turbo, everybody's you know, racing each other, uh, seven minutes is how long they'll be waiting for you on top. Now, realistically, if, if they're your buddies, you'll just be cruising on trail mode, so you can just get up there uh, at the same time. But anytime anybody puts the hammer down, um, uh, this one will be significantly faster. Uh, than, than this bike. Okay, now we're gonna get to probably the most significant part of this comparison, which is the range. The range is determined by the battery and the efficiency. And the battery here is 700 watt hours, and the battery here is 320 watt hours. Uh, and this one is lighter, it's a little more efficient, but at the end of the day, which one is gonna get, how much uh, mileage or elevation are you gonna get from each battery? Now this has the bonus of an extender system. I believe every you know, mid-drive or lightweight uh, e-mountain bike should have an extender because the batteries are small, that's how you save weight. But treat batteries like water, meaning you know, just carry enough for the ride that you have and have some, some modularity. You know, carry more extender batteries. Uh, they go in right here to the water bottle. Of course, you, use, you lose your water bottle space uh, when you use your extender battery. So the extender battery on here is 160 watt hours. Okay, how I like to compare range, everything else being equal, is not mileage. Mileage is just confusing. It's a misnomer because, you know, sure you can go 70 miles on this, 50 miles, but that's if it's dead flat. You know, what mountain bike trail is dead flat? Not around here in Northern California. So what I use is elevation. 
you know, how much can you climb with each battery? So using my test that I stated earlier, you know, I used, um, you know, I had climbed 520 feet of elevation and I used 8% of this battery. On uh, this bike, when I climbed 520 feet, I used 14% of the battery, albeit slower. So with that calculation, you know, you just, uh, 520 divided by uh, 0.08, you get 6,700 feet of climbing. So that's, you know, that's kind of a base, base of comparison for my weight, which is exactly what I get. Um, you know, of course you add mileage and effort and whatnot, and this is on turbo, a pure climb. So for base of comparison, on the exact same scenario, this guy gets 3,700 feet which is really cool, uh, not bad. Uh, on the old Levo, I'd be lucky to get 31, 3200 feet. So pretty good, but not quite. You could see the big difference in range. So, okay, the last part I'll talk about is durability, maintenance, and whatnot. So I've owned this a while. I've owned my, my Levo SL for a while, and I can say, there's a new bike obviously, but I, I know, I know how, how, how they work, I would say, this one is more durable, more reliable, uh, two reasons. This has a few, a few quirks, uh, believe it or not. So the first one is the drivetrain. The drivetrain is not really built for a full powered uh, uh, e-bike and, and person. So basically 540 watts, I put in some 300. Now we're talking 800 watts, right? You know, to, to do my uh, little time trial. And uh, you know, I, I do like to compress time. Uh, to, uh, Know, get a lot of riding in my lunch hour. So unfortunately that chain uh, is kind of thin, 12 speed, really everything's kind of thin. So this one, the drivetrain, it eats up drivetrains pretty good. So this one will be easier on the drivetrain. There's some issues that are, you know, common to Levos that are really problem issues and I'll tell you about them. So the first one is the rear shock. The rear shock on the high-end models, they always blow. So the Fox X2, you know, I rebuilt mine like three times. Finally, I'm going to push. Here, ne never really had an issue uh, with my Levo. Uh, they're using a Float X now, uh, and, and I've never really had trouble with the Float X. Another reliability feature, the battery door on this bike. They have a two-stage door now just to get the contaminants out, right? But it's kind of a, uh, the second door always uh, kind of breaks off. Uh, you can hit it with a pedal too. And, but even if you don't, it's, it's eventually gonna break. They have a new design and I believe uh, it's a, it's a uh, they'll replace it for free. If not, uh, they'll sell it to you for $15. So there we go. Hopefully they'll arm you with some key decision points. And it's not only useful for you know, the SL versus the, uh, the Levo, but for other bikes as well. Should, we go, you, should you go mid-powered or full-powered? Uh, these, uh, these factors are, are true for even other brands on range and power discussions. And at the end, it's what's important to you. Are you an explorer? Um, or are, are you a solo guy? Do you ride with a bunch of guys, uh, buddies on, on mid-powered or full-powered bikes? Uh, it, it's, a, it's a whole gamut. And I think we are very lucky uh, to now have a couple great options in very different categories of e-mountain bikes. Okay, thanks a ton.